Welcome once again to the Northern Kentucky Spotlight. This is episode number three. I'm Catherine Nero. Of course, as always, with our uh, wonderful Marketing and Communications Director, Jeremy Strand, thank you once again for joining me for the fun. Thanks for being here, Catherine. Well, thank you. <laughs> and, you know, of course, uh, we want to thank CVG for being the uh, title sponsor for Northern Kentucky Spotlight and all the support that they've given us, as well as our monthly sponsor, HR Elements. And we've got um, some really interesting interviews to get to today. We're going to be talking massage. And we're going to be talking books. The things to relax you, I guess. So from uh, Bongia Mas Massage and Wellness, that's coming up in just a little bit. And also Blue Marble Books. Books from Fort Thomas uh, to talk about some talk to some uh, small business owners in Northern Kentucky. Yes, the small business center has been around a really long time, and a small business center that's relatively new. Um, but before we get started, I definitely want to give a shout out uh, to Impact Cowork. Uh, they have a great co-working space located in Northern Kentucky with all the amenities plus great parking and the Talent Magnet Institute podcast studios, which we are coming live to um, right now. Um, so if you want to find out more information about the space, uh, visit impactcowork.com. So yeah, we thank them for letting us lease a little space here uh, uh, each and every Thursday. Thank you for joining us as well. All right, so we promised you we were going to talk about massage and wellness. We're going to get into a little zen flow here. We're joined by Adriana Rogers, who is the president of Bongia Massage and wellness. She is a U.S. Air Force veteran. She's been in health and wellness since 2001 and a practicing massage therapist since 2007. Adriana, thank you so much for thank coming in. Thank you for in. having me. Okay, so first of all, if you can only smell this studio. <laughs> it smells amazing in here, thank and that's you. that's one of, the, one of the ways to relax a little yes, bit, but tell us all about how you got into massage therapy. So it really started when I was a kid. Um, I was one of those kids that even liked to massage my camp counselors. Um, <laughs> I bet they enjoyed that. They, they definitely did. Um, and then when I was in high school, I told my parents that I wanted to do massage hmm. therapy. And um, they told me that wasn't a real profession. Um, so they weren't going to pay for school. So I was like, okay, plan B, um, go into the military and That makes my own perfect way. sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the military taught me a lot of things, um, but I also got to be able to serve people and help people, which is something that I always wanted to do. Um, I was an EMT and an LPN in the Air Force, and um, after my service, I was able to use my GI Bill to go to massage therapy school. Wow. Excellent. Yeah. Um, so what makes uh, Bongia different? So, um, massage therapy in general sometimes is seen as just like for relaxation mm -hmm. for those like one or two times a year. Um, but it's really so much more than that. That's why it's called massage therapy. It's actual therapy. Um, so we want to be that difference um, where everybody is unique. No two people are the same. So each massage is completely customized to the individual and instead of that norm of conveyor belt therapy that tends to be out there we do things differently and treat the individual as that well tell us what you are calling conveyor belt therapy what's that <laughs> so it's um the typical like massage place that you mm -hmm. might go to where you're just in and out with no true treatment or healing you're just kind of like a number and for us like our focus isn't on the bottom line. Our focus isn't on the individual hmm. to have actual healing um, instead of just like fluff. So uh, what would the experience be for somebody coming in to Bongia? Um, well, we like to hope that we're the bright part of your day. Mm -hmm. So when you enter, you'll smell much like the studio. <laughs> that would be a plus. That would be a plus, right? We, yeah, we use doTERRA essential oils for all of our, our services and that, of course, that aroma are automatically puts you into the mood. Um, and then each massage therapist talks with you individually and we tailor your service based on what's happening to you in that moment. Mm -hmm. Maybe you slept wrong and like your um, neck is hurting. Um, or maybe you actually have like an injury from um, maybe you were in a car accident or something like that. We can tailor the service to you that day and the therapist works directly with you to create a treatment plan. Awesome. Um, so, so Bonji, I, I, hope we're, I hope we're pronouncing this you right. Are, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, where did that name come from? 
So um, it's Portuguese for good day, and I am half Brazilian, and that's always been like a really important part of my heritage. So I wanted to honor that when we started Bon Dia, um, and we, you, you will definitely have a good day when you come and see <laughs> us. Yeah. Now, you're from Louisville. I am. Why did you settle in Northern Kentucky? Um, so Northern Kentucky kind of chose me mm -hmm. because I fell in love with my now husband. Um, and at the time, um, gosh, it's been at least 10, 12 years now, um, he had the, quote, real job. Mm -hmm. um, and now, oddly enough, as it turns out, I have the real job. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. You are about to relocate as yeah. well. And yes. tell us where you're headed. We're so excited. So um, five years in, we have outgrown our space, and we are moving to Fort Mitchell. We're going to be inside the PNC Bank building at the Kroger Plaza. Mm -hmm. We're basically doubling our size. Um, so we'll be able to better serve our clients with more space. Um, so, yeah, we're really Wonderful. excited. For and that's that. in July. It is in okay, July. Well, coming let's, up. let's hope. Fingers right? crossed it's <laughs> in July. Yes, yeah. I gotcha. July, yeah. <laughs> awesome. So how has your military experience shaped your business? Uh, um, this question was really interesting, and it, I'm glad that I got a chance to kind of reflect on it. Um, it's shaped a lot because when, when you're in the military, like, you don't have an option, right? They tell you to go do something, and you have to do it. So it taught me how to do hard things, even when I didn't feel like it. It taught me how to lead people um, when they don't see the mission and the vision and mm. to bring them along with me. And that has really helped me um, being a parent, being a spouse, and then, of course, having staff that I'm bringing them along on my vision, too. Isn't it funny sometimes how uh, you, you probably didn't have it all planned out, but no. one thing certainly helps you in the next endeavor, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, even, oh God, I could not wait to get out of the military. <laughs> but now I'm like so thankful in so many mm -hmm. ways that I had that experience for sure. What other services does uh, do you guys uh, offer? So one of the massage techniques that we do that maybe people might not be familiar with is we offer cupping. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so unlike maybe the cupping you've seen. The, On Michael Phelps, right? right? Yes. Yeah, I remember those. Um, which was probably actually used fire to do. We don't we do not do that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> they don't tell you that in no. the Instagram no. pictures. No. <laughs> no. So we actually use like a vacuum. Okay. Um, so it's, it's much more gentle, but it's a good way for people that have like chronic issues, scar tissue, um, that can't handle deep pressure, mm -hmm. but it's really therapeutic for them. Um, we also offer health and wellness classes. We offer free classes every single month. We also do a fun thing usually every Valentine's Day. It's a couple's massage workshop where you can actually bring in your significant other or, you know, your mom or sister mm -hmm. and learn how to massage each other in a really nice, fun way. Excellent. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so uh, month of May is Tourism Month at the Northern Kentucky Chamber of Commerce. Okay. Um, so what we're asking all of our guests before they get to leave is when you bring people in from out of town, where do you take them? What's the must-see spot in Northern Kentucky or the region? So I kind of have two. I guess. Um, I always like to take them up to Davu Park so that they could see the skyline. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful, right? Um, but then they have to eat dinner at Soto downtown. I'm, <laughs> I'm with you on both counts. Yes. I like this. This is a good call. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so when I come in from out of town, Adriana, yeah. I'm heading with you. All right. Sounds good. Thanks so much. Good luck with the, uh, with the new building. Thank uh, you. Doubling the size. That's awesome. Yes. Thanks thank so you. much. And uh, good luck to you. So, bon dia. We're going to have to check this one out. Yeah. All right. Stay with us. We're going to be right back. We are going to be talking uh, books and a uh, local bookstore that's been around probably as long as many of us have. We'll be right back.
CVG is committed to supporting the region's growth and success for years to come. As the premier airport for the tri-state region, an active community leader that helps drive economic growth, and an innovator that delivers an unforgettably positive experience. And now it is time for the Business Week in Review, and we have a special guest. Brent Cooper, president of the Northern Kentucky Chamber of Commerce, is here. And for good reason, you've got some new information. It's very exciting times in Northern Kentucky yeah. these days. One of the things that we're really excited about coming up in October, October 4th and 5th, is Kentucky's Edge. It's our bourbon conference and festival. Mm -hmm. um, and just today, you can now go out on the Kentucky'sEdge.com site, and you can not only buy tickets for the event, but you can go in and they're pairing all things bourbon with all things Kentucky. Nice. And um, and you can actually go in and buy uh, dinners and start uh, planning out your uh, experience for Kentucky's Edge. So definitely check it out, kentuckysedge.com. And I would start re reserving uh, stuff right away because it's going to go fast. So it's very exciting. And for those folks who may have missed the initial announcement, this isn't like one festival in one parking lot or something like that. This right. is all over northern Kentucky. That's correct. Yeah, they're actually, we're using the community. Instead of it being in some remote field, it's going to be right in our businesses and our restaurants. Um, that's part of why I'm so excited about because even if the weather's bad, and, and look, mm -hmm. well, we should have chamber weather. That's what we do. Yeah. Um, so hopefully it'll go well. But um, even if the weather's bad, you'll still be able to go inside the convention center, inside all the restaurants, the bars, the concert venues. I mean, the stuff that we're going to be doing at the Madison and all around uh, Main Strasse, uh, outside Smoke Justice and around Molly's and mm -hmm. all that. There's going to be different activation areas. And so I think it's just going to be wonderful. I'm really excited about it. You can't tell. Pretty fired I, up. Well, I understand. So, and that weekend in particular is gigantic in this region. There's a wine festival and a craft beer festival and a bourbon festival. You can celebrate all things and, alcoholic. And the Arizona yeah. Cardinals are going to be coming to play the Bengals. So um, that's going to happen on Sunday. Oh, and wow. then the very next weekend is Blink. So there's going to be plenty to do in Northern yeah. Kentucky in October. Yeah. We'll have to check that out. Um, in addition to that, while we're talking about all things alcoholic, uh, I know we've all been like, hey, what's going in that new Remke, right? Yeah, that what's the, it, or the old Remke It in was Port the Mitchell. worst kept secret in it Northern was. Kentucky. Yeah, it was. Know. Well, and now we know for absolute sure, Braxton Brewing is setting up the barrel house there. They say this is going to be the first of its kind in the nation. Essentially, you can go in and pick a barrel and create your own, you know, custom brew. And uh, so a lot of it's going to be underneath where yeah. we're going to be sitting. Like, it's just going to be, it's a really, it's going to be like an extension of the original Braxton space in Covington. Yes, and we're, we're working on getting uh, Jake from Braxton to Perfect. come on in a few weeks. So um, stay tuned for that. But It's been um, really nice to see the expansion of Braxton in particular. Yeah. And, and really, it's it, it speaks to like kind of the, um, the, the hold that people have on this community. Bill Ramkey is still part owner yeah. of that um, facility, and a normal developer probably would have came in and knocked it down and put something different there, or some cookie mm -hmm. cutter business. But to, to break it up and put in some new businesses and breathe new life into that old building, they're even going to keep that Remke sign. Oh, on really? There. Yeah. Oh, that's great. The Remkeys is going to go away, obviously, but they're going to keep that style of that sign. Oh, that'll be, really be great. Neat. I'm be excited great to, see. to see how, how people have embraced Braxton now, right? It's not, yeah. And it's they've now become a staple. You know, yeah. you've got. You've got Graders and you've got Braxton. That's yeah. right. Those two brands have done yeah. so and, well. I'm and, so and happy. And they're the, for them. the official beer sponsor of SC Cincinnati. I mean, mm -hmm. they're, they're really, really taking hold. In and the then you look what's happened right there on uh, Buttermilk Park with Campo Rosa down the street. Yep. Uh, it's just, it's, it's been, uh, it's been great. It's Absolutely. been great to see. Yep. Um, so, uh, speaking of, of roads, uh, okay. So the Fourth Street ramp, this one is going to cause some. Ooh, some, some issues, but eventually it's going to be great. Uh, so we're told. So in Covington, the ramp, the 4th Street ramp, which I use at least once a day, maybe more, is going to close permanently. Uh, because it is a tight squeeze as you try to head north on 71, 75. If you don't know what you're doing, it's going to be a mess. Um, so essentially, that thing's going to close. It's going to kind of route you south and then back around, making it safer for drivers this is going to take a while, and we know what construction does to this area. Yeah. So just keep it in mind. Uh, and in addition to that, they call that a Texas turnaround, by the way. <laughs> I always thought that was funny. And 275 construction starts tonight. So it's a three miles eastbound in uh, northern Kentucky. Just keep that in mind. It's through the end of the year. Awesome. And this is, by the way, Infrastructure Week. And this is, you know, you talk about infrastructure, let's be fair. It's a little glaze factor. It's not real exciting. Right. But right. when we're talking about some of the great things happening here in northern Kentucky, there's a lot going on. Yeah, and, and people, I don't think, see the long-term ramifications of what roads, bridges, water, sewer, mm -hmm. Internet capability, what they do. Um, you need look no further than what happened in Newport recently with the, the new music venue that's been announced with Corporex and, and the partnership there with AEG. 
Um, that wouldn't have happened if we couldn't have got the double A all the way down and the modifications at Route 8. So Route 9, Route 8 converged there with the roundabouts. That's what they were waiting on. And, mm -hmm. and you need to have access in order to do big things. Even this thing with, with the 4th Street, it's actually going to make things safer and better right. on the Brent Spence, which means long term, that's going to be good for everybody. So, um, uh, And then we, we just did a couple of announcements, obviously the Amazon announcement this week, which I'm right. sure we'll talk about. And... Um, the Perfetti. Uh, Perfetti did another big opening, and they uh, that was on the heels of Coke and Kroger's distribution centers, and they need access, roads and bridges. So that's why we keep talking so much about infrastructure during this week. And U.S. Chamber, State Chamber, we're all singing from the same hymnal about why it matters. It matters for our daily lives. We don't mm -hmm. see it down the road, but it's uh, no pun intended. Um, sometimes you don't see that, but we do as Chamber of Commerce and as as a region, it makes a big difference. And you mentioned Amazon. There's a new exit going in down there. And as a result of this giant hub that just had groundbreaking this week. Yeah, the $41 billion. No. no. I think Four, it's 1.4. 1.4. 1. 1. Yes, yeah. 1.4. Yeah. That's my fault. I, I typed that wrong. Type that in wrong. <laughs> my fault. Yeah. Um, that would forty one would be a that would be quite guess. quite the um, yeah no one point four uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah Absolutely. yeah one point four billion dollar cargo hub and unless you were like living under a rock you probably saw that Basis was here yeah. driving the front end loader not a bulldozer front end loader right. they say yeah, that's yeah, an yeah. Amazon yeah, shovel yeah yeah yeah, yeah. an right. Amazon shovel is that's a front right. loader Who yeah knew? yeah I, so I was sitting in the audience and. Almost nobody knew that Jeff Bezos. I was, was going to say there wouldn't be fifty yeah. people there. They there would have been like five thousand. Right, yeah. Candace knew. Some elected officials knew, but most of the officials I was sitting next to and I didn't know either. Um, we were all just, I cannot believe this is happening, and it was so terrific. And I kept making the joke. Um, I'm sure they ordered this stuff two two hours ago. Got it on Amazon Prime. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but uh, but no, all the stuff that they did, it was so impressive and. That it does take a team to make something like that happen. It just doesn't happen overnight. So Boone County, um, all the city officials, state officials that were involved, and then of course, um, hats off to Amazon. And yeah. they're going to make a big difference. They've already made a big difference. They're going to continue. We can rattle off some quick stats here, which um, mm -hmm. that are are right. And that are correct. Wrong. Yes, yeah. these yeah. ones are right. Not forty one. Um, they're right now. They can park ten planes there. They can. That's going to go up to a hundred. Mm -hmm. um, it's the size of thirty one Great American ballparks. And it will create 2,000 jobs. And what I thought was interesting also is that Bezos said that, you know, we want to move Amazon Prime. Listen, and I think getting stuff in two days is awesome. But he's like, we want to make Prime one day. And one this day. hub is the is one of the big cogs in that wheel to make that happen. That's yeah. huge. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, people don't realize, uh, you look at Louisville and what UPS has done for Louisville. Right. This is going to mm -hmm. be even bigger here in Northern Kentucky. And that's on the heels of DHL. See, DHL uh, is... Over 3,000 employees now. We're the second largest hub for them internationally. Wow. So they have a hub in Dubai. They have one in Europe. And they have one here. And ours is the second largest in the world. And so those two things combined, we're a logistics and distribution, you know, Capital hot spot. World. And I didn't even talk about FedEx and UPS and all the other players that actually do have a lot of employees here and do a lot mm -hmm. of shipping as well. Yeah. And, so it's a and, fun time. And, you know, like way, the Wayfair outlet is out there now in Florence because of things like DHL. Right. And it's going to bring more companies like that because Amazon's right here and you can get mm -hmm. they can get their products right on the Amazon yeah. and out the door well, and, delivered and, to their customers. And you customers. nailed it when you said uh, a day, going to a day. Yeah. But we're already seeing things where it's – 30 minutes, 45 I will tell, minutes. It's I, I, amazing. It's amazing. I ordered a bunch of stuff just this week on, on Amazon, and something came to my door four hours later. I'm like, what's this? Yeah. Yeah. Literally, it probably just <laughs> came up here from Hebron or wherever it is right now. So uh, it's amazing. It's amazing to see. We're going to reap the rewards of that. Um, and in addition to all of that, there's also a slew of ribbon cuttings this week as yeah, well. We, we This week, we'll have five ribbon cuttings. Um, the first one we started off with was Guthrie's in uh, Fort Wright. Um, really great chicken if you haven't uh, checked that out. It is really good. Um, and then, Brent, you mentioned Perfetti uh, opening their new did, distribution center. Did you, I don't know if you guys already talked about but the the uh, they lined the street with Coke bottles and then dropped Mentos in yes. all at the no, same time. No, they yes. didn't. It yes. was That's like awesome. a Bellagio. Yeah, if you want to see, <laughs> if you awesome. want to see a really great video of that, check out the Chamber's Facebook okay. page. Okay. We'll Shameless self-plug. Yeah. That's okay. Um, it's allowed. And they're, they're calling that the Showcase Distribution Center. So those of you that used to go see movies there in that space, mm -hmm. it's they're, they're kind of paying homage to it a little bit. Um, we also had a uh, Humana office open at St. Elizabeth in Covington. Um, it's a really great place where uh, anyone from the community can come in and get some wellness training and help um, – with being being more healthy, uh, then we had Dom Dominion Senior Living Care open up in Florence. That was late. That was late yesterday, yep. and that was a wonderful 
uh, debut for that facility, and that's the second one that they've done recently. And and um, for where it is, it's just really convenient for people as they're coming and going. And, and we kept talking about the quality of life amenities that we've added in the last couple of weeks yeah. here in Northern Kentucky. That's another one, taking care of our seniors, taking care of our families. Um, that was a really nice. And, yeah. and Mayor Whalen was there from Florence, and, and they had the entire police and fire department there, I think, as well. So that was great. Yeah. And then uh, we got one more this week that's actually right after this podcast. It's Nothing Bunt Cakes out in Florence. Awesome. They're going to have wine, and they're going to have cake. All I know is my daughter's already wait. requested her birthday cake from there. <laughs> yeah. July. So it's, it's we'll be, be there, good. Nothing Bunt Cakes. Another sweet business. It's yep. delicious. And we've yes. got more to come next week, so we'll keep you updated then. Um, also, one thing that else is the Business Journal came out this week. Look at week. that. Um, it actually came out last week. We forgot to mention it, so it's we okay, brought it back still in. Out. Still out. Um, yeah, it's got some great articles in there. The cover, the cover story is about the Reds' 100, 150 years. Um, we got also got some of our region's food history in there, and then an article that was a really great article written by Kelly Rose, who's a community volunteer, um, and she's worked really tirelessly on our business journal for a long time. Um, she recently took a trip to Paris, and she compared all the great stuff that we have right here in this region huh. that is just as good as the stuff in Paris. So Who knew? Um, check that out. I was really, Phil Castellini came to our joint board, we did joint board meeting this week with the Cincinnati USA Chamber and the mm -hmm. Northern Kentucky Chamber, and I got to sit next to Phil Castellini, and he specifically talked about that. I was great. Pretty, pretty happy with our, our business journal this year this week that's so. good to know yeah. um and then election day is next week yes don't forget get. tuesday and this is a big deal for you you've been they've been yeah. uh, uh spurring folks along to get to the polls for a while now. absolutely yeah we, we really do have to vote and um i my running joke is you've observed you've heard vote early vote often <laughs> um but we we really do need to vote more in northern kentucky uh, the last primary in particular we were less than 10 percent as a region and that really diminishes our influence and our ability to get our messaging down in Frankfurt. So hopefully people will come to the polls and, and have their voices heard. So thank you for saying that. Appreciate Not it. Not a problem. And then also we want to uh, once again recognize the Outstanding Women of Northern Kentucky who were honored yesterday. I thank you guys for letting me see that event. You were it, terrific. Well, thank you. And it's just nice to see there's so much good happening here and seeing all those wonderful women, including Eva Ferris, who was uh, honored a 100 great? years young yeah, um, yeah. for all of her service and all that she's done for this area. So it, to each of them, congratulations. And to Gina Bath and everybody who's put that together. Just fantastic. Great, great event yesterday. Well, stick with us. We've got one more interview to come. We're going to be talking with a, a business that's been around for quite a while. You may remember it, the Blue Marble, coming up in just a little bit. Stay with us. HR Elements is a scalable, outsourced advisory firm that enhances internal HR resources to achieve your goals. Whether it's part-time or full-time, our professionals provide, create, and strategically support the HR resources you need. For more information about how they can help your organization, call Tina Taylor at 513-313-0501 or check them out at hr-elements.com. Thank you for sticking with us here on Northern Kentucky Spotlight. We are here to talk books and a little bit more as well. Peter Moore is the owner and manager of Blue Marble Books in Fort Thomas and uh, Peter you were a not so silent partner for about 25 years but uh, became an active manager in 2004. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. All right let's, talk, let's start with how this whole thing got started. Um, how did you get involved in Blue Marble? Well uh, my wife Tina uh, started the store in 1979 with a small SBA loan. Uh, we rented a small uh, one-room storefront in the middle of town. It was a former uh, five and ten cent store mm. actually. Uh, we purchased uh, used equipment, uh, shelving, we got a computer, uh, which was... In 1979, that's pretty wow. forward-thinking, yeah. yes. Yeah, uh, 
But her goal was to offer uh, good, simple toys and books. And her guiding principle was there would be no electronics, no electricity, no battery-operated toys. Uh, so that the, everything was child-driven and uh, child-imagined mm. toys. So we had Legos, partly to support our son's habit. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Uh, but lots of books as well. And she slowly migrated to you getting more and more involved in the book industry and offering more and more books. Yeah. So uh, Blue Marble, where did that name come from? Uh, that was a compromise on her part. Uh, she didn't want to use the family name in the, in the business, and I agreed with her on, on that. Uh, she wasn't sure exactly where the business was going to go. She, she didn't want to make it a toy store because mm -hmm. maybe it wouldn't end up being a toy store. Uh, and she played marbles as a child. She grew up in the Philippines without many toys, but she was a winner at marbles. <laughs> yeah. So that was a natural sort of fit. Uh, and there was also a picture at the time, uh, a couple of years old, that the astronauts had taken of the Earth called the Blue Marble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she zeroed in on that and said, that goes together well, it sounds good. And it also provokes lots of questions. Yeah. Because when we would go to conferences, the first question was, well, what is that? You know, <laughs> right. what do you do? And so that's a conversation starter. Fine, we'll, I'll tell you all that's about great. the business. Well, now 40 years later, Blue Marble makes perfect sense. But you're coming up on a big anniversary. Are you planning anything big for it? Yes, we do have a, uh, our 40th anniversary. Uh, we decided on an ice cream social in our Excellent. backyard. Uh, it'll be on Saturday, June the 8th, uh, from noon to about 3 o'clock. We'll serve ice cream with sprinkles, of course. <laughs> we'll have a photographer on hand to take pictures. Uh, we'll have games to play in our backyard. Uh, I have a, a secret garden in the in the back of the store uh, that's open, weather permitting. Not recently, but <laughs> soon to be open. Uh, so we'll have games to play. We'll have play. Uh, we'll work with uh, bubbles and and uh, we'll have a marble guessing contest. Uh, and we'll draw with sidewalk chalk. So just to have a few things. We'll also have a collection of raffle baskets scattered around the store. We'll give uh, customers uh, tickets. They can put their name on the back and we'll have a drawing at the end of the day uh, to um, sell, uh, to offer those uh, raffle baskets. Awesome. One of, one of the things that you are um, kind of famous for is your great green room. Um, where, where did the idea to recreate this come from? <laughs> that was my wife's idea. Uh, she, when we first uh, bought the building, uh, we didn't. We hadn't gone inside the upstairs uh, when we, uh, until we actually got the building. <laughs> uh, so we didn't really know what it, exactly it looked like. But she came into the what was the living room, and she saw the fireplace and the two windows on either side, and immediately he said, yes. "Well." And so, for those who may this. not know, the Great Green Room yeah. from Good Night Moon. From Good Night Moon by Margaret Wise Brown, a 1947 classic, uh, and it's still in print. Uh, we have every variation on mm -hmm. versions yeah. of that book. Uh, we've also had uh, the uh, man, one of the, the people who had written a biography of Margaret Wise Brown, uh, Leonard Marcus, uh, has come to the store uh, and did an autographing for us uh, for his biography so it was quite a few years ago now. You have seen generations of kids come through your store. Um, and you know, I know a lot of people think, oh, who, you know, we don't need to read books anymore. I f it, what is your thought about that? And having seen all these kids come through, how is their reaction to books these days? The reaction to, to, of children to books is the same as always. Uh, they love it. They like to be re read to. Uh, and with our contacts with teachers, uh, we have lots of contacts with kindergarten teachers in particular who say, give me a room full of kids and I will tell you within five minutes which of the children have been read to. Mm -hmm. They're just different people when it comes to schooling. Yeah. Uh, so it just makes all the difference in the world. You can't start early enough, you can't read often enough to, <laughs> to keep, keep them uh, occupied and, and learning things. And it's, it's very subtle, you don't have to teach them how to read. Uh, it's more, they get the experience that this reading is really fun. I get to cuddle with mommy or daddy or grandma or an older brother or sister. Uh, and so it's a special time. <laughs> so yeah. 
they uh, it, it's good to move. hear it's good to hear that 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 love of reading yes. has always been yes. there um you mentioned one author who came in have you had a favorite author come in for a signing yeah i thought about that question for for a long time it's sort of like asking a mother well which of the, <laughs> yes, your five yes. children is your favorite gotcha. you say well uh, they're they are all uh, mm -hmm. great uh there have been so many we've had so many neat experiences one of the things that we do uh when schedules permit is we normally have a dinner or a luncheon for a visiting author or oh, illustrator. Fun. Uh, and that for, for the author or illustrator is very different because normally if they're out on tour, or out traveling around the country, they eat in one hotel and then they eat in the next hotel or sometimes it's a local restaurant, but a lot of times mm -hmm. it's just restaurant food and that gets boring after, after so a while. So this makes it a little different. So this is yeah. a little different. Yeah. It's a potluck uh, dinner in general. My staff brings each brings something. We supply the main dish. Uh, and so it, it's fun. And we talk books, which is also something that the yeah. author and illustrator like to do. Yeah. Uh, they like to find out what else is going on in the industry. Mm -hmm. They have a very narrow window of what's going on. And so we can provide a, a different perspective for them across Across the industry lines. Yeah, and um, that brings us kind of like since you're, you're bringing these people in and kind of showing them the region. The the main question that we're asking everybody this month is when people come in from out of town, where what's that must th must see thing that you take them to, other than Blue Bourbon books, of course. Yes, of course. <laughs> yes. uh, well, we like to uh, support our local restaurants. Uh, there are some great new ones in town that we haven't had an opportunity to really. Uh, take anybody to as yet, uh, like Grassroots and Vine and, and mm -hmm. uh, some of the other uh, local ones. We do have taken uh, authors and illustrators to Pompilio's in Newport. Yeah, uh, right down the street from can, us. We head them out towards uh, Graders if they need a late night snack for uh, and have I to I like get you say need a late night snack. Yeah. They yeah. do <laughs> need it. It's a requirement, it's isn't it? <laughs> And the other thing that's, that's special is uh, my staff. We ha I have uh, seven part-time people working f with me. Uh, they split up the days and the hours that fits their schedule. Uh, so we are very friendly and work, work together on taking care of mm -hmm. doctor's yeah. appointments and, and yeah. uh, things going on within, within the family, family vacations yeah, and I, such. I, I noticed on your website you had a, a nice paragraph about every single staff member. And oh, I thought that's that nice. Was, that okay. was a really great touch yeah. to like really show, show how much you appreciate and them. And they're all very experienced booksellers. So mm -hmm. it's not, oh, here's the clerk, but they won't know anything right. or won't mm -hmm. know where things are. Right. Uh, one of the things we pride ourselves on is being able to have someone come in, describe a child, and maybe a little bit about their interests, and we'll match them up with the book. That's the beauty of a small business, isn't and, uh, it? You yeah, know all that and, stuff. And it makes a, a, a real difference, and it makes generally for lasting customers. They'll come back and say, well, he liked that book so well, what else should he read? What should he read next? And that's what our experts can, can do for the, for the family. Excellent. And just uh, just to make sure people know, give us uh, exactly where you guys are located. We're at 1356 South Fort Thomas Avenue in Fort Thomas. We're a block from US 27, three blocks from I-471 and US 27 Interchange. Can't miss it. And across from the YMCA for Campbell County. There you awesome. go. Thanks so much for coming in. We appreciate it. Here's a 40 more. Go see them on June 8th, the 40th anniversary. We appreciate it. Uh, and that's it. That is episode number three. We have uh, really covered the, a gamut. I love this this one about small businesses in particular. Uh, next week, we've got some fun topics coming yes. up. Yes. Uh, Katie Taylor from Untold Content is going to come in and talk to us about why writing is so important for business. Um, and then we also have the father-daughter duo of Rob and Lauren Hudson. They're going to come in and talk about their new book. Excellent. Excellent. And once again, thank you to our title sponsor, CVG, here at the Northern Kentucky Spotlight. The monthly sponsor, HR Elements. Our studio sponsor, the fantastic talent magnet institute podcast studio at Impact Cowork. I'm Catherine Nero, and here's Jeremy Schrand. We appreciate you joining us once more, and we'll see you right back here on Thursday. Wait. Wait. Don't stop. We yeah. gotta, we gotta thank Ben. Oh, okay, we Ben. We forgot to thank Ben last week. Ben, we I am thank so ben. sorry. Can we flip this camera around yeah, and check yeah, him out? Probably ben not. Gastric, but Ben is back there here. running ben that, is running that head. thing. I apologize, making Ben. Making it so we thank can you, uh, do this each week. Unless he's, everyone's welcome. He says you're welcome. If you didn't hear that, Ben, thank you, and thank you for shutting me up. We'll see you next week. <laughs>